Every extinction we've explored so far happened without intention. Asteroids didn't aim, volcanoes didn't choose, climate shifts didn't pause to consider the consequences. They were forces of nature, blind, immense, indifferent. This one is different. For the first time in Earth's history, a mass extinction is being shaped not by chance, but by a single species capable of foresight. We can measure what's happening. We can name the causes. We can see the patterns repeating. Faster now, louder, closer to home. And that means this chapter isn't really about loss. It's about responsibility. Because when a species understands the damage it's causing, the story changes. This is the Anthropocene. And unlike the extinctions before it, this one is still being written. So now we arrive at the present, a moment unlike any other in Earth's history. Not because extinction is happening again, but because it's being driven by a single species, us. Welcome to the Anthropocene, a proposed new epoch where human activity is the dominant force shaping the planet. And increasingly, that shaping has come at the expense of other species. Scientists say extinction rates today are 100 to 1,000 times higher than the natural background rate. That's not just a blip. That's a planetary crisis. We're losing species faster than at any point since the dinosaurs vanished. Amphibians, insects, birds, mammals, all declining. And what's truly alarming is how widespread the causes are. Let's list them. Deforestation, habitat loss, pollution, invasive species, overhunting, overfishing, urban sprawl. And of course, climate change. Warming oceans, rising seas, acidification, extreme weather, all accelerating the unraveling of ecosystems. But this time there's no asteroid, no super volcano. It's not nature turning on us. It's us turning on nature. Exactly. Elizabeth Colbert in The Sixth Extinction puts it powerfully. Humanity isn't just another species. It's a geological force. She starts her book in Panama at the Frog Hotel, a safe house for amphibians that are going extinct because of a chytrid fungus. And yet that fungus likely spread globally because of human movement. A single pathogen accelerated by global trade, wiping out species by the hundreds. It's a grim metaphor for our impact. And it's not just frogs. There's the great auk, the American mastodon, the Baiji River Dolphin, extinctions we witnessed. And many more we didn't. Species disappear every day that we'll never even know existed. So is this truly a mass extinction or just a tragic side effect of progress? That's the uncomfortable truth. It's both. Our industries, our expansion, our hunger for energy and resources, it's reshaping the biosphere. And if current trends continue, scientists believe we are on course for another big five-level extinction. But unlike the others, this one isn't inevitable. It's a matter of choice. And action. Because it's not just about saving polar bears or protecting rainforests. It's about preserving the web of life that we ourselves depend on. Pollinators, clean water, stable climate, biodiversity. Our survival is entangled with theirs. And there are people fighting back. Conservationists, scientists, local communities, protected habitats, breeding programs, marine reserves, rewilding efforts. And some success stories, like the California condor, the Sumatran rhino, and the gray wolf. It shows that when we intervene with care and purpose, nature can rebound. So the question isn't just, are we in the sixth extinction? It's what role will we play in it? We can be the destroyer, or the steward, the asteroid, or the guardian. And that brings us full circle, because extinction isn't just ancient history. It's not locked in fossils or museum exhibits. It's now. It's happening in the forests, the rivers, the coral reefs. And the choices we make today will echo through time. So what will the fossil record say about us? That we consumed without care? Or that we chose a different path? Or will we be the first species to analyze its own end? The sixth extinction is still being written, but unlike the others, 
This one has an author. And that author is us. So what have we learned? Walking through the ruins of five lost worlds and one that may still be saved? That life is resilient, but also fragile. That extinction comes not just in fire and impact, but in silence and slow erosion. And that we are not immune to the laws of nature. We are participants in them. Each extinction changed the world, not just by ending species, but by opening space for what would come next. Trilobites vanished, but vertebrates rose. Amphibians fell, but forests spread. Dinosaurs ended, and mammals began. And now we stand in a moment where the outcome is not yet decided. The sixth extinction looms, but it's not written in stone. Not yet. Which means we hold something no other species has held before, foresight. The ability to see what's happening and choose what to do about it. And that makes us more than just witnesses. It makes us authors of the next chapter. So let's write wisely. Let's learn from the fossil record, from the stars, from the silence after impact. Let's remember that extinction isn't only about death, it's about transformation. And if we choose to act, if we choose to care, we may yet become the caretakers of a world that continues to thrive. A world richer in life than we've ever known. One where extinction is not our legacy, but our turning point. Because these stories don't end here. In the next episode of The Lantern's Glow, we'll continue exploring the threads that connect us all. From ancient life to cosmic possibility. Until then, all is one. Five times, life collapsed. Five times, the planet reset. Each ending carved space for something new to emerge. Now, we face a sixth. Every extinction left echoes in every coral reef, every ancient fossil bed, every warming current, and it continues through you. But this is the first time the echoes are calling forward, not backward. A warning, a chance. We stand on the knife edge between collapse and renewal. We are no longer just witnesses, we are authors. And the choices we make today will echo for millions of years. If this journey stirred something in you, share it. Not for us, but because knowledge travels like sparks. And the more of us who carry it, the brighter the flame becomes. So let's write wisely, stay curious, stay kind, and keep the flame burning. This is the lantern's glow. All is one.